Just want to write So I just thought I will write all the formula that we have derived so far, okay. And of course, you first derive this and then you derive this, okay. So, so we have to now, we will now proceed with the Hartree-Fock perturbation theory, which means essentially H naught is Hartree-Fock. Hamiltonian, which is sum of the Fock operator. So, psi 0, 0 becomes psi Hartree Fock, and all the psi k zeros are basically the determinants, the other determinants of H naught, okay. All other determinants of H naught and among the so MCN determinants that we discussed. So, we will uh, have to start with that as the motive, as that perturbation, but before I do that, I have to discuss the third Slater rules, okay. So, the last Slater rule that we would discuss is the matrix element of the Hamiltonian between two determinants. So, let me call it psi 0 or let us say phi 0, it does not matter, which differ in two occupancies. Okay, I was calling them psi, I am just calling them phi, it does not matter. So, this is the determinant n electron determinant, this is also n electron determinant, but now the difference between these two determinants are that two spin orbitals from these determinants which are a and b are replaced by virtual orbitals r and s. Is it clear? Just like a and r we had done. So, if you write phi 0, if I write phi 0 as chi 1, chi 2, in spin orbital, these are all in spin orbitals. Note that everything that we have first doing in spin orbitals, we later spin integrate wherever possible and convenient, okay. So, this phi a b r s is then So, let us say I have a general determinant. I have identified chi a and chi b. So, I have also identified the ones around this and ones around it. It does not matter, I mean just for uh, the sake of understanding. So, then you just write chi 1, chi 2, etcetera and wherever this chi a is there, you replace this by r, rest are all same. Where chi b is there, you replace this by chi s, rest are all same. So, I get the determinant. A B R S. Note that it is important to say what is being replaced by what in this case. So, I am replacing A by R, B by S, that is how the nomenclature is. On the other hand, if I replace A by S, B by R, 
the only thing that will happen is that this will be the negative of this determinant because this is essentially interchanging the two columns. Is it clear? So, so I can write an equation that phi a b s r is minus of phi a b r s. So, if you replace a by s and b by r that is simply negative of a by r b by s because in the final determinant r and s are changing sign, changing place, okay. So, that is the reason that it is negative. So, similarly I can say this is minus phi of b a r s, is it also clear? So, it is the same thing b to r a to s, okay and of course this is same as plus phi a b a s r. So, if I interchange both just like this two electron integrals anti-symmetry, it has similar thing. If I interchange both, I come back to where I was, okay. So, basically what is being replaced by what is now important in terms of sign, the determinant is of course same, you know, it, it, it is physically it is the same, just the negative, negative sign does not mean it have a different wave function, okay. I have the same function, but it is important to know the phase. So, what we are talking by A B R S is that A replaced by R, B replaced by S. Huh? Uh, B, oh sorry, sorry, I inverted A B R S. No, no, I had written A B S R, I think. Oh no, one meter. No, no. no. Yeah, yeah. See, what I wanted to write A B S R is A B R S. B A I should write S R here, yeah, B A S R and B A R S because I started with A B S R, I did not start with A B R S, I think that was the, it does not matter, you understand what it means. So, if I interchange two a pair here, pair here, the chain side, if I interchange both it becomes plus. So, of course, right now I am writing A B R S, okay. So, the result is the following. Again, I remind you that H has two parts. Now, we are not talking of H naught plus V, no? do not get confused. We are talking of normal Hamiltonian which has two parts, sum over H of i plus 1 by Ri. We are not talking of H naught plus V. So, this is not the Fock operator, this is a normal H of i as we write. So, this of course, you can write it in terms of Fock operator as well, but as long as you understand how to handle the sum of one particle operator and sum of two particle operators, it is done then your sum of one particle and two particle may change. So, the first part does not contribute to this. Remember in the type B, the first part gave only one integral A H R, right. In this case, it does not contribute very simply because H is a one particle operator. So, whenever you will put this here, at least one of the spin orbitals between this and this will be different because I had two differences. So, with the H of 1, you will be able to connect one difference, but the second difference will directly integrate and hence, hence it will become always 0, okay. So, for example, if I have an integral 1, 2, H of 1 plus H of 2, or let us say I call it A, B, H of 1 plus H of 2, C, D or R, S in the same nomenclature, okay, R, S. So, A 1, I think the nomenclature is clear. These are coordinates A1, B2, H of 1 plus H of 2, R1, S2. So, if you take any one of them, so let us say A1, B2 integration, H of 1, one of them if you take R1, S2, then you can see it is 0 because H1 can connect A, H, R. So, it will have become A, H, R into B of B, S and that is 0 because of the orthogonality here. Okay, so, just for showing two electron, so it cannot connect, but this is not 0 because H is able to connect. So, this integral may survive, A of R, A R is 0, but A H R is not 0, but H can only connect one difference, okay. But since there are two differences, one of them will remain and that will make it 0. So, the first part has no contribution, the second part would be of course able to connect and the result of the second part is the following. So, this type C result is basically A, sorry, there is no summation A B 
remember a b is what is contained in phi 0 that is replaced by r s a b anti symmetrized r s that is all there is no summation nothing. So, remember how, how the, the progression is taking place. In the case of type B, there is a, the first term, there is only a single term and then there is a summation over only one index, if you remember, okay, A, B anti-symmetrized R, B, there is a summation over one index. In the type A, there is a summation over one index for this, summation over two indices for this. In type B, it became no summation, only one term, one index summation. Type C, this becomes 0, no summation, only one term. So, how the number is falling as you go and clearly by this logic, if I have 3 occupancy difference, nothing else will survive. So, anything else which is 3 occupancy difference, it is 0 because by the same logic now 1 by Rij cannot connect 3 occupancies. So, one of the integrals, one of the or, uh, pair of orbitals will integrate to 0. So, this is where the Slater rule will actually end. So, if you understand up to this point, and this is very simple, it is only one term, the differences, but remember it is an anti symmetric integral. So, do not forget, it is AB 1 by R 1 to 1 minus P 1 2 and R s. So, if we now understand this, we can come back to this formula, okay. Is it clear? So, I think you should be able to write all the Slater rules, expectation value, one difference, two differences for both 1 and 2 electron operators, all right. So, we will come back here. So, let us again go back and discuss this. So, our H naught is sum of the Fock operator. So, I rewrite the expression sum of the Fock operator which I am writing as H of i plus the rest of the Fock operator which I am calling V Hartree Fock i, which is basically sum over the other occupied orbitals, chi b star 2, 1 by r 1 2, 1 minus p 1 2, chi b 2 d tau, the operator part, okay. So, I call it V Hartree Fock i. So, the V is 1 by r i j minus V Hartree Fock i. It is important to remember this because many times we feel that V is just 1 by Rij. But since the one electron operator already, the H naught already includes this, it is very important to remember this. And I now write down the same formula, E naught 0 now is sum of the orbital energies, okay. So, I use canonical equations. So, this is of course, E naught 1 is psi Hartree Fock V psi Hartree Fock, which has actually two terms psi Hartree Fock 1 by Rij psi Hartree Fock minus psi Hartree Fock V Hartree Fock psi Hartree Fock, okay. So, V sum over V Hartree Fock. So, you will, you will be able to now reduce this by Slater rules this term as well as this term by type A. So, I have two types of Slater rules, there are the type A there are two Slater rules, I can reduce it and write a long form which I did in one of the classes. But important thing is to realize is that if I add these two, I get totally get Hartree Fock energy because simply this was psi naught psi Hartree Fock H naught psi Hartree Fock. So, you can see that if I write this up, it becomes the Hartree Fock energy. I have shown this also in the long form, that is expand this by Slater rule, add, you get the Hartree Fock energy. But when you expand, remember this term was very important, because this cancelled the, uh, the uh, uh, this cancelled the half that comes from this, uh, uh, this cancel actually brought the, cancellation brought the plus half in the Hartree Fock energy, okay, when you did this. So, this part was very important to uh, do. So, now what we will do, we will first write psi 0 1, then we will write E naught 2, okay. So, 
for psi 0 1 remember and for E naught 2 we need to sum over all the states of H naught okay except for the ground state. So, we have already identified those states of H naught as psi A r all psi A r all psi A b r s and so on. Remember we did this exercise if you sum all of them plus Hartree-Fock which is one determinant you get totally m c n. We showed you that combination problem. So, this is m into n minus a, n into m, n, m minus n, this is n c 2 into m minus n c 2 and so on okay number because we have to make sure that we take only pairs of a b okay. So, your number here will be adjusted by let us say a less than b r less than s. Note here you should not write equal to because if a is equal to b it is 0. I hope you can realize this because if a is equal to b that means what am I doing? I am I am replacing the same. So, it will actually become identical either a equal to b or r equal to s. So, I have to write this as a less than b or less than s okay, in terms of the number of determinants that we get. So, if I have just 2 orbitals or 3 orbitals for example, this should be 1, 2, 1, 3, 2, 3 right. So, only 3 of them would be replaced. Similarly, by RS pairs, all RS pairs. So, R also cannot be equal to S. So, then you have your psi 0 1. So, let us write the first order correction to the ground state using this. So, I have to now this k will be actually replaced by this determinants yes huh? a less than b because this is identical a greater than b and a less than b are negative of each other i just now showed i just now showed if you interchange a b or r s they are they are negative of each other so they are basically same determinant they are not really any other functions So, what are the unique doubly excited determinants, the unique sets that is all we require. So, psi 0 1 will now be replaced by, we will not replace write k, instead we will write this determinants. So, first we will be singly excited. Remember Hartree-Fock is anywhere not there, k not equal to 0, so we do not have to bother. So, I first write all singly excited determinants. So, I just go back to that formula of psi a r. So, it is a linear combination of all singly excited determinants first term and this is the coefficient. So, coefficient is psi a r v psi Hartree Fock. I am just writing the coefficient later for obvious reasons and this is E epsilon a minus epsilon. I will just explain to you. I already told you I prefer to write it in this manner because this I defined as a resolvent with this summation sorry with this summation. So, that this quantity can be written simply as R 0 V psi 0 0. Just as you can write this as psi 0 0 V R 0 V psi 0 0 okay. So, I define the resolvent. So, it is easier to write because you have this Kate bra notation. If I write this here, this is lost because the, the Kate bra that there is uh, following psi k 0 psi k 0 is lost. You cannot see this. So, you cannot have a resolvent. So, it is better to write it in this manner. So, exactly the same way this can be a part of the resolvent. The difference of these two energies is epsilon a minus epsilon r. We have already discussed this. So, it differs from the E naught 0 by this the difference in the orbital energies. So, that becomes your first term and then the second term you continue because all excited states are there, right. So, you have to continue. 
So, the second term is a b r s again a less than b r less than r s psi a b r s. psi a b r s v psi Hartree Fock divided by epsilon a plus epsilon b minus epsilon r minus epsilon s right. And we can derive this each of this. Now we know how to get this by Slater rule. Remember this will be conjugate of what I wrote. So, what will be the result of this integral? It will be R s a b. Then you have a one electron part minus v r that is 0. Just as h of i did not contribute. So, because it is a one electron part, so there is a two electron thing which cannot contribute. So, this integral is actually R s a b. Remember, I did this letter rules in terms of H, but in all my perturbation, the rules are in terms of capital V. So, you have to take little precaution when you write. Capital V and H are different, of course, okay. But capital V also has a two electron and a one electron operator. In a different way, one electron operator has come, not H of I, that V Hartree Fock has come and that has to be subtracted, okay, not added. However, that one electron part will not contribute because you already said that if it is a sum of one electron operator, it, can, it cannot connect these two. So, these are let me let me analyze these two determinants, uh, these two integrals. So, one of them is psi a r v psi Hartree Fock. Of course, if you know this, you know its conjugate, how to do this. So, what is the result of this? First, let us start from here. What is the result of that? Brillouin's theorem, if it was Hamiltonian, it would be 0. Remember, now what is the result of this? So, everybody thinks it is non zero? Yes, it is 0. I will show you why. I can write this as psi a r. There is a simple way to do it h minus h naught psi hat correct? Which is psi a r h psi Hartree Fock minus psi a r h naught psi Hartree Fock. Note that this part is 0 by Brillouin's theorem. Note that this is also 0 because each of these determinants is an eigenfunction of h naught. So, when h naught acts on psi Hartree Fock, it has some value, some of the orbital energies, right? Not, not E Hartree Fock, some of the orbital energies times psi Hartree Fock, right? Remember, my, what is my H naught? H naught is sum of Fock operator. So, H naught acting on psi Hartree Fock is E naught 0, which was sum of the orbital energies times psi Hartree Fock, correct? Many people by mistake will write E Hartree Fock. So, I am again repeating, okay? It is E naught 0. So, whatever it is, it does not matter. The psi ARs are orthogonal to psi Hartree Fock, right? So, this also becomes 0. So, it is 0. For a, for a, for, for, so, I hope it is clear. If you want to expand this V as 1 by Rij minus V Hartree Fock, of course, you have to get 0. So, please do that by long form Slater rule. This is a quick proof, but do this, apply, apply this Slater rule to the first part and the second part. None of them will be vanishing in this case, okay. So, each of these letter rules will actually produce some numbers, but when I subtract, it should become 0, 1 by Rij minus V Hartree Fock. So, please do that exercise, but I just wanted to quickly show that it is again 0. So, the first thing to note that this set of terms do not contribute to the first order correction. Coefficients are 0. So, the singly excited determinants do not contribute to the first order perturbed wave function for the ground state. So, that is a very important realization. So, the first set of determinants which will contribute are from doubly excited determinants, okay. So, we need to know what is the value. We have already said 
that psi a b r s v psi hot p fog again this is very easy to prove you have a two electron part minus one electron part that is anyway zero so you have this as r s anti symmetrized a b okay so that is the integral so this part will will of course contribute with r s a b and so the whole result will then become a less than b in terms of orbitals. Now I am writing in terms of orbitals, please remember. Here I was writing in terms of this capital K was not orbital, capital K but the states of the system. But now I am not writing in terms of states of the system, states of the systems are defined by the orbitals, okay. So A less than B, these are orbitals which are stuck here, the rest of the orbitals I am not writing, the original Hartree-Fock orbitals are here, the differences are only marked, okay. So A less than B psi a b r s and the coefficient of each of the w x array determinants is r s anti symmetrized a b divided by epsilon a plus epsilon b minus epsilon r minus epsilon s. Remember these coefficients can be positive or negative. I had only remarked that when you go back to e naught 2, e naught 2 will be always negative. But psi naught 1 is just a function, okay. So, there is nothing called positive negative. I mean, these numbers can be either positive negative. So, it is just a linear combination of psi a b r s. But when I go back here, I am now going to put this a, a v and close it with psi 0 0 that psi naught 1 and that will become that will give me negative energy, ground state energy will become negative as you will see. We will we'll do this here. So, I, I hope this is clear, right, that we have this as the psi naught 1. So, if you want to calculate psi naught 1, the contribution of psi naught 1 comes from the doubly excited and because of this letter rules, there is nothing else. I hope that is also clear. You cannot have triply excited because that everything is 0. 2 electron, 1 electron, everything is 0. So, the only contribution and this is a very important realization for the, there is a large amount of physics which is involved and you should read that uh, an article by Sinanoglu uh, on pair correlation theory which I will refer to you is that the first order correction to the wave function comes only from doubly excited determinants. So the doubly excited determinants play a very important role in the correlation energy. Obviously because psi naught 1 comes from doubly excited determinants, E naught 2 will also have components from only doubly excited determinants. So let me write down that component of E naught 2 now. So let us write E naught 2 here. So we can close this. So I have already got psi naught 1 and we know that E naught 2 is nothing but psi 0 0 V psi naught 1 or we can use this long form, it does not matter. So psi 0 0 V psi AB RS is AB anti symmetrized RS by the same way and again the one electron part V Hartree-Fock is 0. Remember this is capital V but the result is same because V Hartree-Fock is a one, one particle operator, okay, result is same. So then you have E naught 2 as A less than B, sorry, A less than B, R less than S, A B anti symmetrize R S, R S anti symmetrize A B divided by epsilon A plus epsilon B minus epsilon R minus epsilon. I hope all of you can see this because all I am doing is to write another psi 0 0 v with this and that gives me a b anti symmetrized r s and the rest remains the same. You can see this from here also that this is a b anti symmetrized r s, this is r s anti symmetrized a b divided by the orbital energy and that gives you the final e naught 2 which is basically what we call the mp2, mp2 energy, okay. So you have two anti-symmetrized integrals in terms of the spin orbital. Obviously, this is conjugate of this. So again, you just note that this is always negative because the denominator is always negative. It's occupied minus virtual. Okay, pairs of occupied minus pairs of virtual. Remember this: a less than b r less than s. We'll have to, of course, discuss the importance of doubly excited configuration in the correlation energy. 
particularly for E naught 2. And in fact, what is interesting to note, which I am not doing that E naught 3, I just want to write it down. If I do E naught 3, E naught 3 also has doubly excited configuration only. I call it configuration. This determinants, please remember that this determinants I am giving a name configuration. Many people write configuration. In fact, if you write the val write E dot 3, you will realize that that also has contribution only from doubly excited configuration. Only from E dot 4, singly excited and triply excited will start coming in a very complicated manner, okay. So that because series will become very different, you know, we are not writing the series. So obviously, even singly excited, the reason singly excited starts to contribute because the singly excited directly with Hartree Fock through V is 0 by Brillouin's theorem or whatever because of mainly because of Brillouin's theorem, but singly excited will start to contribute to doubly excited, they will then contribute to the Hartree Fock because I told you the process of is that you go from Hartree Fock to all excited determinants. So, this is let us say singles, this is doubles. You cannot go directly from here to here, right, because of Brillouin's theorem. Psi Hartree Fock V is 0, but you can go from here to here, okay. And then you can see third order what is the problem. You can come back here because there has to be three processes and then come here. You are again done because of this is become 0. So, third order also you cannot do. But when you do fourth order, lot more things can happen. You, there are so many doubles. So, remember when I go to one doubles, I can go to another doubles because doubly excited is also not one configuration. I can go from one doubly excited to another doubly excited by through V and then from that doubly excited, I can come back to another doubly excited, another one and then eventually come back here or that is one way or I can come from this doubly excited back, back to from here itself back to singles. So, that is 1, 2 then I go back to a doubly excited and then come back here. Now, this is allowed because I am not directly mixing. You understand? I go from one doubly ground to doubly excited, back to singly excited, back to doubly excited, back to Hartree Fock. So, that is E naught 4. So, I have to have four different Vs. So, psi 0, 0 V, psi doubly excited, psi doubly excited to psi singly excited, psi singly excited to psi doubly excited, back to Hartree Fock. So, the numerators will of course pile up, but it is easy to see that the singly excited will start to contribute from the fourth order and so would be triply excited, okay. So, there are several terms of course, but uh, I think I am not going to do E naught 3, E naught 4, but I just thought I will give a pictorial representation of what really will happen because this formula will become more and more complicated. So, all kinds of excited state will come, not one. So, you will have a k, k going to L, L going to something back to 0. Eventually, psi 0 0 has to come back to psi 0 0, but through many scattering processes. So, there will be different excited states, okay. So, all possibilities you have to consider, but the point is that the doubly excited determinants so that is something that we now understand because second order energy is a very important energy. At the lowest order, this contributes a, a large amount. So, doubly excited configurations or determinants. When I say doubly excited, please remember it is with respect to psi Hartree Fock. Now, everything we are talking about with respect to psi Hartree Fock, it is a Hartree Fock perturbation theory. So, doubly excited configuration play very important role in correlation energy. That is a general thing, and we will come back to this why. In fact, I had given you this Lovedin's article, uh, which, which was very nice. But here, this is this is a theme that is even eventually there is a very important theme called pair correlation. I will come to that the physics of this little later. So this is actually a theme of pair correlation that the correlation mainly occurs because of two electrons getting excited together, and this is what you see. The psi AVRS is basically like two electrons getting excited. So the entire theme is called pair correlation, which is much more than just doubly excited determinant but there are correlation coming due to two pairs going up, three pairs going up and so on simultaneously. So, I will come back to this theory uh, or rather this analysis and there is a very nice paper again 
just as I had given for Lavdin, you say Octasina Noglu, he is a very brilliant Turkish physicist, Octasina Noglu, okay, he is a brilliant, I think he is one of the most brilliant physicists or to have walked in this area. He almost walked out everything, but he lost interest after that. So, he left the field. In fact, today what is couple cluster doubles or couple cluster is actually the genesis of couple cluster was by Octasena Nagu. Unfortunately, he did not give the second quantization language, work, did not work out diagrams, but he told everything that was there in couple cluster, the physics. And after that, he lost. He went to graph theory and started doing something else. So, there are people like that who do not push things till the end. Then, of course, the mercenaries of couple cluster came, like Rod Bartlett and other people who actually kept pushing. <laughs> so, the, but Sinanaglu was not of that type, but I, I, I actually like his type of science because he is very, very original. So, he wrote a nice review article, just as I had given for Parola Blavdin, Advances in Chemical Physics. Please remember this journal is very good. Volume 6, page 315, 1964. Just as Lovdeen had given volume 2, 20759, uh, he tells me 58, but I think it is still 59. The bibliography is 59, so it might have been published in December 58. I don't know. But anyway, you see this Octa Sinanaglu is 64, I think. Uh, the page numbers are pretty much correct, I am pretty sure. Just see this article. It is a very good article, and those who have time and energy can read this article. Much of it is really written. So, there are not too many equations, okay. So, that is very nice. The physics will come flow. Why correlation energy is dominated by pairs, pair correlation energy. So, that is important. And you can see the first effect of this, that the correlation energy comes in pairs, the doubly excited determinants play a very important role. So, I hope it is clear. Just remember how to handle the V. Do not, do not jump into a conclusion that V is H, you know, or V is 1 by Rij. Either way. So, although singly excited gets 0, it is it is a direct consequence of Brillouin's theorem, but it is basically because V can be written as H minus H naught and they are also the states of H naught. So, Brillouin's theorem combined with this, it actually gives you 0, this part. You can try to explain this by actually writing V as 1 by Rij minus V Hartree Fox. So, please do this exercise. You know, I am asking the exam actually to show by Slater rule. I will not do it in the class. I am just telling you. So, you must uh, practice, practice such things. Many of such algebra I will not necessarily do. This algebra can also be written in many, many ways. Remember, this is in terms of anti symmetrized integral. So, if I ask you, write this formula in terms of regular integral. What is the regular integral? Just ABRS. It is a regular integral. So, of course, if you write this, then each of the terms has to be expanded in the following manner. So, you have A less than B, R less than S, then each of these will be A, B, R, S. So, I am now writing only one bar. So, when I am writing one bar, it is regular integral, okay. A, B, R, S minus A, B, S, R into the same A, B, R, S minus A, B, S, R. Huh? Uh, what happened? Oh, RSS is wrong. That is okay. They are identical. It does not matter. The integrals are identical. But it is better to write because we all use uh, real orbitals. Okay. So, RSBA or whatever divided by epsilon A try to expand this. Now, is a numerator, you will have four terms, this into this, this into this, this into this. And two sets of terms will be identical. I hope you can see this. For example, ABRS and RSAB, ABSR and RSBA will be identical. Why? Because RSBA you can write as SRAB by interchanging both the pairs, correct? So, so this ABSR and this is actually SR, SRAB, so they are identical. Similarly, ABRS and RSAB will be identical. So, there is one set of term which is called a regular integral, another set which is the exchange, ABRS with RSBA, ABSR with RSAB. So, that is like an exchange. So, one pair has been exchanged when you multiply and see what you get, okay. 
because when you do summation, you know because of dummy variable thing, you can you can do lots of nice things. But before that, you must realize that I have a less than b r less than s. So you cannot do a dummy variable summation because your a b is not summed completely, neither is r s summed completely. So you will have a problem. So what you should first do before you can actually uh, uh, analyze this term in terms of regular integral is to write this with all a b all r s. So how will you write this? So the first term itself e naught 2 in anti symmetrized integral, I want to write this as all a b all r s because then I can do lots of dummy variable interchange a b less than r s, a b anti symmetrized r s, r s anti symmetrized a b, epsilon a plus epsilon b minus epsilon r minus epsilon b. It is not correct, right? So what do you do to make it correct? Minus y minus half, half, just half, half into half, 1 by 4. So first write this expression as 1 by 4, then try to do this because lot of simplifications will come if I sum over all a b all r s. Okay, please do this again as in at home exercise. So basically the question is write this, uh, write e naught 2 in terms of regular integrals over spinor, over spinor with it. So that is the, I have to give you one assignment also. So I think this, let me give this as a formal assignment, one. Second is spin integrate, E naught 2 for closed shell systems. So again, I, you know what I mean. So these are all spin orbitals. So you have already done lots of spin integration. So spin integration will be easy after you do the regular integration. After you do the regular integral calculation, then only spin integration will be easy. So spin integrate E naught 2 for closed shell systems and derive expression in terms of special in terms of special orbitals so integrals over special orbitals okay so first write this it will become easy don't try to spin integrate directly from here i'm just kind of telling you it's so, okay you can do it so I have not completed this because this is not completed. I have written just in the long form. So simplify this by recognizing that certain term, two, there are two sets of terms. One is like, like regular a Coulomb kind of thing, one will involve an exchange in the 2V. And then, so first write this, but before that you use this expression. So start from this expression, it, it will be easier to write. So starting from this expression do this one and then eventually spin integrate, write everything in terms of special orbitals for closed shell systems. So your summation will then become A and B will become n by 2, Rsn will become m minus n by 2, summation index will also change. So we will, uh, we, so we will complete today's class with this, but I will come back later as a theme I am going to discuss the importance of pair correlation. First the physics of pair correlation before I go to the CI the next topic because CI also you will see exactly the same thing that doubly, doubly excited configurations are playing an important role. So in general there is a theme that for correlation energy the electron pairs play a very important role and not one electron excitations. One electron excitations could have played role be, but because of the Brillouin theorem you do not have the role and that is a direct consequence of Hartree form. The fact that we have varied the orbitals in the first order. It essentially means I have eliminated some importance of the one electron excited determinant. So in a way, it is a consequence of the Hartree-Fock method theory. So I am starting from hartree If I start from any other orbital, remember, then perturbation, then of course singly excited will play a role, okay? And we do not want to do that. 
So, from the heart reflux when you start singly excited that is something that I want to re-emphasize that this uh, this is going because of out because of Brillouin's theorem. Otherwise, of course, it will be it would have been there, okay. And there are other orbitals through which people actually try to sometimes start. Uh, I, I do not think it is a good idea. So, it has never really taken shape in terms of pro programming, but there are lots of you know theoretical papers, okay. Uh, obviously, Hartree-Fock perturbation is the best that you can do. Thank you.